All right, so welcome back. Happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, back with the Erica Time Show. We're going to get right into it. We got a lot to cover, a lot to go over. Uh, but like I told you in yesterday's video, everything is here. So we've got the FX Black Label, okay, hardener, resin. We've got our liquid pigment. So I want to talk to you about the liquid pigment. Um, her black one's coming up. Okay, this is the black metallic. This is a powder pigment. So most everybody knows what the powder pigments are. Uh, here's one for May Spring. So look, check that out. Powder pigment. Uh-oh. I'm going to get it everywhere. Here we go. Powder. Okay. So this is the liquid. The liquid is definitely a solid. Nothing is going to pass through this. Uh, no light, anything of that. Um, so one of these right here, 12 ounces from Countertop Epoxy, one of these covers two gallons. So we're roughly going to be mixing one gallon uh, to cover this top on the base coat side. So just one application, one pour, but this is just the first step of our process. So if you're just tuning in, we've already showed you how to get the top to where it's at right now. Uh, it's already been coated twice. We've went over all that. So if you're looking for those to get going to catch up to the resin part, they're already online. Check them out on our page. We're going to end up using about half this guy in our gallon here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me get some gloves switched. Look, really cool thing here. Don't make that mistake. I've got that bronzy gold tint all over my gloves. I'm getting ready to mess with the white pigment stirring, just as a precaution. Switch your gloves out. You don't want to get that pigment, uh, something that ain't supposed to be in there. You don't want to get it in there. So, uh, for anybody that don't know, this is from Countertop Epoxy. It's one of our favorite go-to resins. It's the black label. Um, Hardener is going to go in first. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. There are a lot, I'm going to say again, there's a lot of casted tops out here. And there are tabletop resin. Two different methods, two different kinds. A lot of casted tops. Okay, casted tops have their own trickiness to them. Curing, dealing with live wood. Okay, we feel that the countertop... Uh, the tabletop resin, we feel that that is a much easier process, but a lot of people that do that, you know, have the, a tendency of the same questions, you know, about the bubbles and the, uh, just the little imperfections at the end of the rainbow. So hopefully this video will help with that. Um, there are a lot of tabletop resins you can do, meaning design technique, all that type of stuff. Commonly what you're going to see is you're going to see a base color go down. Then you're going to start seeing in smaller doses different colors that they're pouring across, some thick, some thin, some, you know, here and there. They're using, a, you know, commonly a blow dryer to blow all this stuff. Um, isopropyl comes in the mix with tinning that to make these little cell effects, these explosions. You know, all that stuff is really cool, but it's also all nerve wracking. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of people feel that once they get going, will it look right? Will it this? Will it that? So we're trying to help with this video. Uh, we want to make this one one of the most easiest ones that we're, we're almost guaranteeing here that there's, we, we don't feel that you can mess this up at all. And, you know, you don't, you, you don't want to waste your time or waste a bunch of money or anything like that. So it really don't get any simpler than this when we feel it is a two-step process but we're going to take a lot of that out of the equation the the blowing techniques and all that and the and the really the feel of possibly everything not going right we want it to go right so if you have one of these we're going to use half of this in our gallon here and literally this simple it, it's just going to be poured out on our surface we are going to move this around everywhere evenly. 
if you have done your edge work and everything just like we had showed you in the previous previous video excuse me um, this is going to turn out phenomenal you're going to be so happy with the results you can do it on a uh, something as small you can do it on something way big but really just uh, let's just stick with one base color let's get that down we're going to let that dry this evening we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to show you some of the coolest simplest veins that anybody can do you cannot mess these veins up and then we're going to we're going to all achieve a really gorgeous top that is uh you know just super easy for anybody to pick up their first time and be able to to get this to happen so without any further ado let's go ahead and get started uh we don't really want to skip a bunch of stuff here um I don't want to draw everything out too too bad, but you know we don't know as usual where people are in their process, so we like to go over everything very thorough. Um, always want to start with your hardener. It's a two to one ratio, so we're going to hit the two liter mark, then the four liter mark. We have a heat gun sitting here, so we're going to be testing that. Normally, I tell you to take a light, stick it behind the bucket. It's going to shine through for you so that you can see really well. Um, we're actually using the light right now on the phone side. We don't have another one handy, but just wanted to run that by you so that you knew. We're always going to start with the hardener first. And I'm going to show you something here in just a second. Uh, we're going to go ahead and squeeze a big bunch of this out. we got to get up here to the 2 liter mark. Once I get close, then I start slowing down at a nice little steady stream here. Let everything start leveling out uh, before you get too close even. Pick your bucket up just a tad. Kind of give it a little tap there just to make sure that everything's settled. Then we're going to go ahead and creep right up here to the two liter mark. Once you're close, go ahead and stop. I'm going to let this settle just for a second. Give everything time to catch up. And while I do that, I want to tell you something. Uh, with the heat gun, so it's a cheap heat gun. No big deal from the dollar store or something like that. But look, check it out. I'm going to turn this bottle. I want, to, I want you to see where it is we're starting we are at 71, looks like 71.7, 71.8, okay, 72 even. That's where we're starting with the heat, with the resin. That's a really good starting point, 70, 71, anything like that. You don't want to be too cold. You don't want to be too hot. Okay, after that settled just for a few, we're going to check everything. And uh, this is what I want to tell you. If by some chance you have a little bit too much resin in your container, you can always take uh, something, obviously make it something clean, and you can reach down in there, a little cup even, and you can scoop some of that back out to get to exactly where you need to be. Okay, we are right, we are just above where we need to be. So hang tight. I'm going to do the same thing that I just sit here and told you to do. Okay, so I want to show you, um, this is actually, so this is a rubber mold of a measuring cup. So we got some cool little, you know, but it's... It's rubber, just like, you know, you would pour resin in this and we could make a measuring cup. So we actually use this because we can clean it right out. And it will allow us on this end, it's going to allow me to take some of this resin out. Because this is the stuff that happens. So it's great that you actually know a way to do this. What, why you don't want to pick this container up and, and pour some of it back out is because it's going to run down your sidewall and then it's going to take a long time for that to get off the sidewall and it's not going to come completely off and it's going to contaminate your bucket 
this is the way where I can sit here and make this line back to perfect by letting what overflowed here from dipping it into the cup. Not only do I have this much I'm taking back out, but I'm sitting here adding more in until I get right to that perfect line. Once that happens, a simple shake right over my thing, and then because this is my resin mold, it's clean. I'm gonna add all this back in, and this is gonna go right to the wash station to be cleaned up so we can reuse it. So it's definitely, uh, it's a lot less messy when you have these little gadgets handy. Okay. So there is our hardener. We are right on the dime. Okay, and believe it or not, I didn't do that on purpose just to show you something. That actually happened, so I'm glad it happened because I may not have thought about it to tell you. This is actually where it really matters. Okay, you can safely start putting the, the resin in here, part A. This is where you need to be careful, and as you're approaching that 4 liter, you do not want to go over. So, what we're going to do with the, with the resin, a little different than we did the hardener, is we're going to do a more steady of an approach so that we're not shaking everything as it's going up. We're going to creep up here more even. We don't want a bunch flowing in there making a bunch of ripples. So we're just cushioning this a little bit more than we did the harder going in. See, we got that nice steady flow. There's none of that go gunk, go gunk, go gunk. That all makes waves down here in the bottom. So we try to put a little air and push in behind that to make it all a steady flow. So we just cross three liters. Remember, one to one ratio. We got to get up here to the four liter mark. Now, a lot of what you're trying to achieve, again, all we're doing is a white base coat. So pretty much when this comes out and it all gets spread over the table evenly, our job is done. All we have left to do at that point is watch our BBs. It takes about an hour in and they will start forming right below the surface of, uh, of your edge. And then you can safely come through there right at the time that they're starting to dry and uh, you can come through there and wipe them clean and they'll just stay going. So it limits all the sanding and everything else. So now that we are completely mixed together, we have already sanded our little paint stick here. We didn't want any little hairs, anything like that coming off in it. Um, actually a great, great one to use is your uh, PVC, like a PVC quarter round, something like that. Those are great to use. So all we're going to do now, this is about a six minute process. Uh, again, I judge everything. This needs to hit 85 degrees or right there at it before we pop it on this table. So this is where the mixing comes into play. And just like I started doing, mixing all these together, I am literally holding this guy over here and getting all these sides clean along with the bottom. And this is the process, okay? Get a good look, Jay. It's my son Jay, y'all. Help me out on the camera today. But get a good look. See how milky and thick, cloudy that is, okay? We're gonna keep this same process up for the entire allotted time. We're gonna keep checking it, and we're gonna bring you back when it gets a little bit closer. We got, we got a ways to go, though. Check it out. 73, 72, yeah, we got quite a ways to go before we hit 85 degrees. So we're going to save some video footage, bring you right back when it gets closer, and we're going to show you the difference. 